what I've always loved about the theatre is the scenery, the painted backdrop, the flats that come in to suggest a scene. And that's the beauty of this production, is it has all of those elements, those real tangible elements. Where's Clara? Guided all of the sets in this film, they are just breathtaking. Every single set is beautiful. When I first read the script, the thing that sparked my imagination was the fact that we had this really exciting world, and it was divided into these four very concise visual areas. You had, of course, the land of sweets, the land of flowers, the land of snow and ice, and this mysterious fourth realm that was a little ambiguous in the script, but still very intriguing. <laughs> Making films is a collaboration by its nature. My partner in crime is the set decorator, Lisa Chug, who's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. It's a magical production and it was a chance for me to get involved in creating really amazing, fantastical sets that you don't often get that opportunity to create. Your Excellencies, may I present Miss Clara Starbaum. I've worked quite hard at creating a very strict colour palette. We start with real Victorian London in the late 1800s and we wanted to do Christmas without doing the typical reds and golds. So we came to this idea of using teals and blues and greens we're on one of these streets, and they've completely transformed it into a Victorian street. There's snow on the ground, there's people in the crazy outfits, there's a bunch of carriages drawn by these beautiful horses. It was kind of like, we have gone back in time and we're now in Victorian England. And then when you get to our magical world of the Four Realms, each of those different worlds has its own natural colour palette. The land of ice and snow, of course, would be whites and icy blues. Flowers are brightly coloured, and land of sweets are more synthetic, saturated colours. Where am I? You're in the Christmas tree forest, but that is the Fourth Realm which is currently at war with the other three realms. The fourth realm has a different colour palette in that there's sort of reds and golds and blues, but they're very faded and worn down to sort of reflect the dilapidated state of that realm. They built this carousel, this massive carousel, and we had to run on and off of it, and then eventually the carousel breaks. It was incredible. We ended up having to build three different forests here at Pinewood to accommodate all the different set changes and things. We had horses riding through these forests. We needed substantial lengths, in some cases 250, 300 feet of forest so that we could bring the horses up to a gallop or a canter. And of course, the extension of these forests was done using traditional painted backings. 28, take one, eh, camera? It's kind of incredible to be able to walk on a set, be in a completely different world, get into character, and then it feels real. Maybe I have been spending too much time in the attic. We have one fantastic moment in the film where we do have a piece of traditional ballet, which is really lovely and a fantastic opportunity for us to design these very unique sets. We very much wanted it to look like a theatrical performance, so everything you see was made. We were able to design a set where Clara and Sugar Plum and the other main characters who are watching this performance, they're actually in the centre of the stage. So we have ballet dancers performing all around them. The ballet tells the story of the four realms, how your mother created our world. Being here on this set, it's so surreal. It's important as an actor and actress, but especially as a ballerina, to really feel one with the sets and really grasp the story that's being told, not just through my movements, but by my surroundings. Which one will you choose? Jenny Bev and I have known for a couple of years now, and she is an absolute genius. She is one of the greatest costume designers alive today. A project like this is just amazing for a costume designer. The variety will provide some fantastic characters to costume. The party dress has the top with the poofy sleeves and the little poofy flower that's really fun, cute, the little tails. Clara's a bit of a tomboy, but for the party, because it's formal and we're in the 1870s, she wears a traditional party frock. You kind of can feel the fabric moving, like if you jump or something, it all kind of moves with you. And I love the bustles that I have. I absolutely love them. You look like the daughter of a queen. For the pageant, Clara then wears a frock that we imagine is something in the realms that would be very princess-like and a great opportunity for a really fantasy look. 
pageant dress. That is a really cool dress. With the lace and the sleeves, it flows and it has like this long train. It's got like this flowery pattern. It was one of those dresses when like you're a little girl, you wish you could wear like a really crazy fancy dress. That's that dress. The regent of the land of sweets, Sugar Plum. For the Sugar Plum costume, we'd chosen this dress which had movement in it and was made out of little fans, three layered little fans. There must be about 200 of them, pleated. They take up a phenomenal amount of fabric. The style of the hair and makeup and costume had a huge influence on the performance. I thought the costume was brilliant. It morphed into this sweetie like kind of Marilyn Monroe type drag queen type sort of thing that we have going on. So the performance got more extreme to sort of fit what she looked like. <gasps> Bring me the tin soldiers. You can't use tin soldiers. Well, of course I can. Don't be silly. To see the artisans and these extraordinary craftsmen from the costume designer through the hair and makeup designer through to the props, through to the set design, the set dressing, they've been allowed to completely use their imagination. I have so much respect for every person that's lending a small piece or a big piece to make all of this work together so smoothly. What all of these people can make the sets look like and the costumes, the hair and the makeup, it's truly impressive. Although the Nutcracker has been with us for so long historically, I hope that what the audience will take away from this film is just a wonderful new world that they haven't experienced before. Clara, your mother was the cleverest inventor I ever knew. And there was never any doubt when I asked what her greatest creation was, it was you.